Stuka Joe here. This is the seventh Bayotacon, the last day. This is uh, January 28th. And we're going to talk about sound of drums. And we're going to talk about sound of drums with the boss, with Uva. And I have him here. So how are you doing, Uva? Yeah, I'm doing uh, pretty well, <laughs> as you said, last day. Uh, but yeah, we reach our shower battery, so we are full of energy. Okay. Yeah. So this is your first time at the Bayota Con, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we um, we are very happy to have been here and uh, yeah to meet uh, the Spanish Spanish gamers. Very yeah. very nice people, very nice folks, and it was a really great show here. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. And of course, you brought uh, a, dis a display of your games here, Sound of Drums, and one of the most uh, eye-catching games really is this Alao 1807 which people, I know people in the live streams have been asking me, hey, go over and take a look at Ayla, Ayla. And there's, all, there's always been people uh, on the game and, and, and playing the game, it looks, it looks great. So uh, can you tell us about Ayla and, and, uh, and actually as, as the sound of drums first, because this is, a, I think it's a company which is relatively new, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, correct. Yeah, we are based in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I'm a German, I'm a, I'm a Swabian, but I moved to Switzerland a couple of years ago mm -hmm. due to my wife, who is uh, Swiss. And uh, yeah, we decided to, to create a society publishing company in mm -hmm. Switzerland. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we just started last year. We, of course, we had a couple of years of uh, preparation, you know, prototype testing and, mm -hmm. and development and uh, our first games showed up last November, mm -hmm. the games of the series History of the Ancient Seas. Okay. Uh, Can you tell us about the, ga the games that so showed last November? Do you, do you, oh, yeah, 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 sure. Um, we see them there. I, I have still a Mare Nostrum set up. Okay. This is the five player version. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a huge game. It's, it's uh, an epic game. It's mm -hmm. about um, Sith building in the ancient Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that called my attention, the first time I saw it, I said, oh, a game with wooden, uh, must be a, a, some like an area, area game, but it's not, it's a hex game. Yep. And the, it's really nice because the hexes, uh, I think they're, they're printed on the vertices so that you can, you can, you can make them up. But the, hex, the hexes are not an eyesore, they're, it's a very attractive map. And you have, so you have wooden pieces with hexes, which is something that it's not very common. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I would like to call it a hybrid, if you want. <laughs> yeah. um, some people say, uh, is it a war game? I said, no, it's a Sith building game, but uh, war is always an option. Yes. Building armies, building fleets and campaigning mm -hmm. is an option. But it's uh, foremost, it's a Sith building game. So mm -hmm. you start very small, you have a capital, mm -hmm. some trading posts, and then you try to expand. And there are different ways how to get victory points. Mm -hmm. We have a very, very nice and sophisticated development chart with mm -hmm. uh, four different segments where you need to try to develop your civilization, mm -hmm. build yeah. an empire and become the dominant power in the Mediterranean Sea. And here you have Carthage, Rome, yeah. and the Greek city-states, Greek city-states, Persia and uh, Egypt, Persia and Egypt. So yeah. you have up to you have five uh, factions are yeah. fighting out here. So it's a very nice production. You have different types of uh, wooden pieces there. I see the build like buildings. I see uh, soldiers. And what are these? These are trade posts. Oh, trade posts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of we have in in Maranostra, We have almost 500 wooden pieces. Wow. Most of them are customized. So we designed them. We developed them. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a lot of components in that game. Yeah. It's a very nice, very nice production. And the box, it's a big box because it brings a lot of stuff, I suppose. So yep. very, very nice production. So I know, I know you have additional games like this, uh, like you have expansions. Yeah, the expansions and they're actually it's a series of mm -hmm. uh, three games. Okay. So we have uh, Marin Rostrum, the big picture. Mm -hmm. Then we have Hellas, it's a, a two-player game where you okay. play Athens against Sparta. Is that the Peloponnesian War? Peloponnesian War, yeah. Okay, Hellas, great. And then we have a three-player game which is called Dies Irae, Anger of God. Okay. Um, which is a three-player game which faces the Greek city-states against uh, Egypt and Persia. Okay, wow. Yeah, so we, we started actually with a game series, three games, 
at once uh, for a different number of, of players. Of players, yeah. yeah. Then we have expansions like new markets, new armies, and then um, we have an expansion that is called Pirates and Barbarians, mm -hmm. which is a non-player faction. You can activate Pirates and Barbarians, they show up on the map and they, uh, they are okay. really annoying. <laughs> yeah. Once on the map, they can be played by every faction. So oh, I see. you really so need to think about do I want to activate Yeah, they can come to bite, bite, back to bite you. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. This was the idea behind, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, so you have Mare Nostrum, you have the Hellas, which we see it here. Yep. And you have... Uh, DS0, we sold out. We are sold out of uh, DS0. I can't show you, unfortunately. Yeah, well, that's a good thing that, you, that they sold out. And you have also... I saw this one over here. This yep. is under development? Absolutely. This is a very early prototype of uh, a game playing in uh, Europe, Renaissance. Now how do you spell that? How do you yeah, pronounce that? This is the German title, Kein Gott, Kein König. The English title will be Neither King Nor God, or Neither God Nor King. Nor King, okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge game again. We will have uh, 600 wooden uh, playing pieces here. Okay. And uh, it's playing in, um, in Europe during the time of uh, Renaissance. Oh, okay. Uh, with a very, I think, with a very innovative uh, mechanism. Uh, I will... We will talk about that later when I have more to show because it's okay. really very early. Okay. Yeah. And then we have this one that yeah. everybody, hey, hey, Stuka, go over to Eilau now. Finally, I have a chance. This is a tactical, a yeah. grand tactical game? Yeah, it's the first volume of a Napoleonic series. Okay. Um, battalion level or tactical level. Um, and we try to combine very traditional hex and counter concepts that you folks know mm -hmm. with uh, some new ideas and some new approaches. Okay. And one thing, there's many uh, Napoleonic uh, tactical systems. You got La Bataille, you got the one from Kevin Soccer. Some people say, oh, La Bataille is too complicated. And there's others that are less complex. So, so how this, this system, which I know this is like the first volume in, in a system. Where does it fit in, in, in terms of complexity? Do you think this, this particular system is compared to, to others? So it's much less detailed and crunchy as is La Bataille. Mm -hmm. La Bataille has a long history. It's a 50 year old uh, series. I was a La Bataille player for many, many years. I loved the series. Mm -hmm. I, I played it when I, mm -hmm. yeah, when I was very young. I started to get into uh, the La Bataille series. But one day I stopped mm -hmm. because it got too complicated in yeah. a way, too, too crunchy, too much detail. And with this system, we are somewhere in between the Labatai series and the series of my friend Walter, who is uh, doing the, the Eagle series. Oh, the Eagle series, yeah. yeah. He skipped the formations for, for good reasons. It was his design decision. But um, my idea was, if you do a Napoleonic tactical game, you need mm -hmm. to have formation. Yes. Uh, because uh, this is uh, the salt in the soup, as we say. Mm -hmm. and, yes. uh, but we tried to keep it relatively simple. So okay. For example, we skipped the sk skirmish formation. We skipped them. Okay. Because uh, a lot of rules are necessary to regulate how to perform and how to act with skirmishes for mm -hmm. not much effect at the end. Yes, we, we skipped them. Okay. And what we did is um, we have a very a highly interactive game system. Mm -hmm. We draw activation cubes mm -hmm. from a cotton bag. And with this activation cube, I can activate a formation mm -hmm. on the map. I execute the activation. We draw a new activation cube. And then we have this ping pong. Ping and, 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 and you have activation thing. cubes of both players in the same cup? Yes, absolutely. Oh, so, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. so we, we draw the them same from this um, cotton bag. bag. Yeah. And uh, we have either a, a French or a Russian activation cube. Then we activate a formation. And the activation cubes are the, which the, one? These ones. Oh. Uh, and, we have a, and we have red ones in them. The red mm -hmm. ones are when you, when you draw a red activation cube, you will have a simultaneous fire. Segment. Oh, okay. So, so, so firing is not, they, they only can fire in, in the red cubes? Yes, absolutely. Oh, so you don't have total control. You don't know when that's going to happen. Absolutely, yeah. Now that creates tension and creates uncertainty. Yeah. 
I, I, I don't have my troops yet in position. The other guy does. I hope they don't, oh, they yeah. drew the red one. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that, that's great. That's yeah, very especially interesting. Especially here in that game, the Russians, they had a, a, a superiority in uh, artillery. They had mm -hmm. a lot of heavy guns with them. And uh, the Russian player, he's always waiting for the red cube because mm -hmm. he wants to fire his, uh, his mm -hmm. batteries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting, yes. And then you have some uh, off-map displays here. Yes. What? What do you keep track here? What we do here is, on the one hand, you have to have, for each formation, a, um, an order. According mm, okay. to the order, you are allowed to execute uh, certain actions. So, for okay. example, if you give an order like attack, of course, you can move adjacent to enemy units and you can mm. attack them. You can have a, a simple move order, this means you can move, you have a defend order, you have retire order, or you have a hold order. So we have seven, seven different types of orders. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, so that's, a, that's where you keep track of the orders? Yes. And then, unlike many chip pull systems, when you pull an activation cube, mm -hmm. you can decide which formation you want to activate. So this is a huge, huge uh, difference and uh, yes. step into the right direction, in my opinion, because you as an army commander, you decide which formation. Yeah, because normally the, the, you, the chit tells you which formation. Exactly. Here you, it just tells you the side that yeah. can activate, yeah. unless yeah. you draw a red one, which then it's a, f yeah. a fire sequence. Yeah, so. absolutely. And in case of drawing a chit, it tells you which formation to activate. And let's say you, ha you have this formation in reserve, mm -hmm. The cheat is lost because you yeah. may not want to do anything with that formation, so the cheat yeah, is lost. It's pretty and useless. It's not um, really uh, realistic. And during the battle, the army commander he has a focus on a certain spot on the battlefield, mm. and um, he is active in that area. And then we have the possibility to activate um, the formations up to three times. So first activation means that um, they are under full full effectiveness. And yes. with each additional activation, it loses a little bit of its... Uh, what do you use to, to keep track of how many times they're activated? Oh, you have them yeah, there. You, you, you draw the cube, oh. and then you place it here on the display. Oh, I see it there. Oh. And then you place it here. This is, this is very nice, because yeah. at, a, at a quick glance, yeah. you know how many activations, and then, and then you don't have the counter clutter. Uh, One thing that I don't like is games that have counters, and then each counter has a marker yep it looks more like a protest than a battlefield you know everybody with a with a sign blah 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 or rally here it looks really when you look at it it it's you only see the units yep mostly and yeah. and uh, and the situation here the, the facing and and that sort of thing and it's very you, you, i like games where you look at them you know what's happening you don't have to be lifting stacks and yeah. doing that kind of stuff so yeah. that, that is very clever as you notice it there, there, there are no markers on top of the units and, yeah, uh, there, there are two ideas behind it. On the one hand, publishers design beautiful, beautiful yeah. counters for, for units. <laughs> and then they create yeah. counters like for disorder or yeah. shaken. And those are the ones you see. And they are ugly. <laughs> and they, they are put on top of the, of the units. Yeah, and then you don't see the map, you don't see yeah. the counters, and then it's go, yeah. a goal, it goes to waste. Uh, yeah. so it makes the game more enjoyable. You spend less time sifting through stacks and putting markers on yeah. so that that is absolutely that is a very good idea here at the climax of the battle we have a lot of action going on and as you notice we do not have any counters or markers on top of the units no that's yeah. i noticed that and i'm going man yeah. you know a game so involved you know it's a, such at this scale and no markers it's it's remarkable it's yeah. remarkable very well done yeah so this game i guess people ask where, in what stages of production is this game? It has been uh, produced. It's okay. now actually on the boat on the way to uh, the warehouse in uh, Europe and okay. uh, to our distributor and fulfillment center in the US. Oh, you got a fulfillment center in the yeah, US? Yeah, oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, I didn't work. know that. Yeah, we work with uh, rich <laughs> so, so it won't cost, shipping won't cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because my people over there are asking, yeah. how, how, do, how do you get the, the games in, in the States? So there's, yeah. there's going to be, I guess, you go to, uh, uh, Sound of Drums website and you can order the games yep. for the people in the United States, they can do that. Yeah, and then it will be fulfilled by Bridge in the, in the US. We have okay. a very low shipping rate for that, 12 US dollars. Oh, that's, so I think that, that, that is very low because look yeah. at this box. It's a, it's a really thick and big box. 
So that is that is great. And this is the first volume of a series. Yep. And do you have an idea which is the next yeah. in the series? Yeah, the next in the series will be a double feature. We will do a quatre bras. Ah, okay. And we will do in the same box Wartenburg, 1813, a battle in, uh, in, in Prussia. Okay. A battle that, as far as I know, was never covered by any publisher. So okay. it's really an obscure battle, but very interesting. You're going to have a captive audience. If you want to play that battle, you got to buy that game. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we will do a double feature. Each time okay. we do, a, let's say, a smaller battle or one map size battle, we will do a two battles per box. Okay, that's so good. That you really get some value for your dollar. And one thing, I, who and who is the designer here? Myself. Oh, I, yeah. I should have asked that first, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, okay, so congratulations on that point yeah. because uh, you're the designer and you are the the the, the chief of yeah. uh, of the of the company. Very similar to Luis Hernandez, he wanted one of his games published, so he he made a, a company and published, and that that is remarkable, and that is something that that also because that shows that this is a labor of love too you yeah know? absolutely yeah absolutely. this is this is your baby and and yeah. you've taken good care of it the map is fantastic it, it gives that winter feeling you know the the battlefield uh so that it, it yeah, it's and, and we took care about many many details like for example we do not have simply dice in our game we yeah. have customized dice so we have them made specially for us you can see there's a print on it it is saying i know 1807 oh so nice this is uh, one of the many details that we put into this design that is very nice yeah. very nice indeed wow all our play aids are uh, printed on a uh, gray board two millimeter gray board mm -hmm. They're really very very solid very heavy oh i didn't notice that wow that is really good and it is something that many publishers do but we take one more step our Play aids are folded. We have folded edges, and it should give you. I mean, you hold it now in your hand. Yeah, it it's not gonna a feel of deluxe. Uh, yeah, something. You're gonna, it feels good, and it's gonna last. Yeah, a long time. So it's it's a beautiful game to watch. It looks very interesting to play. Very playable, and you have the element of the cubes. So it it should be very replayable also because you're not gonna draw the same cubes all the time. Yep. So that's going to make it very playable. So uh, this is Eilau for everybody who's been... Uh, I forgot to ask, how many scenarios does... We this? have five scenarios. Five scenarios, yeah. okay. We have the big battle scenario, of course, and then we have four smaller scenarios, an introductional, introductional scenario, okay. which is uh, only with very few units, just to learn the combat system yeah. and how to move and how to give orders. And then we have three mid-size scenarios. Oh, okay. We use only one map and... One uh, map, okay. That's and great. Fewer units. So you got uh, to learn the game, you have a scenario, and then you can keep on building and, and playing. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So you have it, this I suppose is the the big battle scenario, right? Yep, yeah, okay. absolutely, yeah. And, and it's a big battle scenario, and it's it looks completely manageable. It is. That's, yeah. a, good, that's a good, it's not intimidating with it because all those counters or huge stacks of units. So uh, it looks very clean, very, very elegant, very elegant. So I congratulate you again on... Thank you this. very so, much. So this is Eilau, and uh, I, one of my viewers, uh -huh. the Blue Tweezers, asked me about a game, and I talked to you about yeah. this before, yeah. Patriots and Traitors, which you did not bring. Yeah. Because you you thought it wasn't, this wasn't its place here, a war game convention. Yeah, I, I was not sure <laughs> if people might be interested. Um, the, the game is in its final stage okay. of production. It's a, it's a beautiful game. It's a card-driven game about the French Revolution. I always say year two. Um, I mean, if somebody says a game on the French Revolution, to me, instant buy. Because yeah. it's, in French Revolution, it's just, uh, just a plethora of events after events after events. And, 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 and uh, it's something fascinating. And, 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 and it's under game. I don't see many games on the French Revolution. I mean, I have, there's a States of Siege game, in which I, I have played, but it's not, it's not that beefy, meaty game that, that, that it couldn't be, that it can be. 
Yeah, the the issue with the French Revolution is a lot of things happened. It was yeah. very chaotic. It was very complex. And me as a semi-professional historian, I always made a huge turn around the French Revolution that, because it was too complex for me. Mm -hmm. But the designer, say Jason Sanchez, he did an incredible job. He put a lot of history, a lot of events into his game, and it's still a very manageable game. Very manageable okay. game. It's a card-driven game. Yeah. And uh, he, he did really a fantastic job, and our graphic artist, Mark from Martial, he mm -hmm. made it a beautiful game. We will have uh, a huge board for, for Paris, it will be a double layer board, yeah. um, beautifully done, superb quality as you will see it here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward for that. So when, when do you think that one will come out? This will be, this will be available, I think, beginning of April, okay. it will be in, in uh, fulfillment worldwide. Okay, yeah. that's great. So yeah. I'm, I'm picking up that one too. So, yeah. so that 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 is great. So, yeah. Uva, is, is there any other games that are that are in the pipeline you want to talk, uh, talk we about? Have, we have many projects in the pipeline. We are very ambitious. We will publish. That's our goal. One game each uh, quarter, so four okay. games per year. We will uh, continue now uh, with the game about the French Revolution. Then we have a very very nice concept, a very nice design from uh, Karl Paradis. Okay. Um, yes. With a with a with a new idea, with a really completely new approach to historical board games, historical strategy games. Okay. No hexagon this time. No no counters. We will work with uh, wooden people, uh, wooden meeple again. Mm -hmm. uh, customized wooden meeples. A lot of them in the box. It will also be a huge huge game with um, six battles in the first volume. Okay. And I'm also looking forward to this. We will start advertising and marketing for that game from Carl uh, around uh, April. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on that too. So. Yeah, yeah, would be would be great. Yeah. So I want to congratulate you, Sound of Drums. The games look fantastic. I, I like. It seems that you have a philosophy for playability and game component quality, yep. which is a very good marriage. You know, yeah. because we want our games to be beautiful, but they have to be playable. It's no use if the game is beautiful and completely unplayable. You know. <laughs> yeah. So th these are games that look very uh, fun to play. And very nice, and uh, and and I want to congratulate you, and, and and hope you can keep on coming to the Bellota. We're we're, we're gonna keep on coming here and see uh, how the games develop and 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 the new games coming out. I will I will come back for sure. It was really a great show here. It was really a big pleasure to meet so many nice gamers, and I will come back. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay.